Hey guys, it's math time. Back to Miss Moore's Monday math challenge for all my amazing mathematicians out there. I have been getting so many amazing story problems from you guys. Like I'm talking about some really, really good stuff and I've been solving them all. I'm so impressed with you guys. Um, keep them coming. I'm gonna pick one and we're gonna do it together every Monday. Now, if it's a two-stepper, I'll do part A and our friends are gonna do part B. That's what I'm looking for. And um, we'll get started with this one. Let me show you whose I picked today. Look how amazing this is. This one is from Braden Brown. He submitted this problem, and what I love about it, two-step problem here. This is something we've been working on in second grade before you guys left, two-step story problems. This is something really important that you guys need to be able to do before you get to third grade. So it's important that we keep practicing it. Um, something else I like about it is three digit and three digit. We get into them bigger numbers, numbers up to a thousand over here. And um, we're gonna do some subtraction, which we were working on. But what's different about this one, I'm going to show you guys, or we're gonna do together some check-in with addition. We'll get to that. Something all we were working on right before we left. I'm gonna put Brady's beautifulness work. Let's see, over here. Oh, let me fold that under. Guys, you have no idea how much I miss you. And you have no idea how much I miss my beautiful whiteboard at school, Mr. B at school, because of this paper and all this painter's tape. Oh, I'm gonna run out of painter's tape too. All right, so let's get busy. What's always step number one of our story problems? Step number one, read the problem twice. So let's get busy. Part A, starting with Brayden. Brayden made 372 paper airplanes. He gave 158 to his friends. How many paper airplanes does he have left? Okay, so we read it once, now read it twice. Read. Brayden made 372 paper airplanes. Oh, I, sh I should say that if you don't have a pencil and paper, you need to go get that now. Pause me, come back, yeah. All right, so now we read and we circle our key information. Brayden made 372 paper airplanes. Stop at that period and let's think about what that's saying. Brayden, that's a lot of paper airplanes. Don't waste my trees, don't kill my trees over there. You better be recycling. Brayden made 372 paper airplanes. What would I circle here? What's my key information? What is it showing me? That my boy Brayden, he made 372 paper airplanes. And that circle's gonna go down there. Now, keep reading. He gave 158 to his friends. Stop at that period. Think about what that means. So he has all these, Brayden's a good guy. He gives some to his friends. How many did he get? He gave 158 to his friends. So whenever we're making that mind movie, think of 372, and he's giving away. Is that number getting bigger? Is that number getting smaller? Start making those mind movies. Now going to our question, here's my question mark. That's where my question stem is gonna come from. The question stem is whenever you pull pieces of this question to make your answer statement. So let's read. How many paper airplanes does he have left? Let's write our questions down. Step number two, remember it? Step number two, rewrite your question. Let's go. How many paper airplanes does he have left? Well, if I was gonna do this question um, into an answer statement, I would definitely underline he, or you could say Brayden, have, he, has blank paper airplanes left. Use those words to write your statement. Let's go. I'm going to write Braden. Braden. It's okay if you put he on this one because that was what was in the question, but it's okay. Braden has blank. Ooh, I'm not sure what crazy on that one. Airplanes left. Period. It's a statement. Ends with a period. So this is what we're looking for. 
So we finished step number one. We read the problem twice, circled our key information. Step number two, rewrite your question. Step number three, draw what you know. What do we know here? Okay, so we know that there's a Brayden out there. My boy, Brayden Brown. I'm just gonna put a B for Brayden. We'll know that stands for Brayden. And we know that he has 372 paper airplanes. Goodness gracious, could you imagine if we drew 372 paper airplanes? That would take a long time. Good thing we can model it with a tape diagram and just say, hey, this model, it represents what number? 372. 372 what? Paper airplanes. All right. So that's something I know, I circled it. What else do we know from this problem? We know that he gave 158 because he's a nice guy. So is his number gonna get bigger if he gave away some of those? Mm -mm. What's it gonna do? It's gonna get smaller. So let me see with this one right here, I am going to, let's say, chop this right here and Label it with 158. That's what he gave away. Gone. Bye. What are we looking for here? A missing what? Partner. So, put a question right here. Because this part is what we're looking to find. This part is what we already know, what he gave away. And we already knew the total. So, step number one, read the problem twice. Step number two, rewrite your question. Did I do step number one or this one? Let's start over. Step number one, read the problem twice. Step number two, rewrite your question. Step number three, draw what you know. Step number four, write your equation. What's our equation? Look at it. We already know our number's gonna get smaller. If I was adding here, my number would get bigger. That wouldn't make sense. You gotta think about those things. All right, so I'm gonna start with 372. And I know my number's gonna get smaller because he gives away 158. And we're looking to see what is that missing part left after he gives away. All right, step number five is solve and get to work. I'm gonna pick the strategy of place value chart and place value desk. It's something I'm comfortable with, something I'm good at. I know my friends are good at it. So you can try that strategy. If you wanna try a different strategy, I know some of my friends really like airway. Some of them like um, tape diagram. Good, but let's do um, the place value chart with me as well, okay? And step um, part two, solve it how you want. So let's do our place value chart and vertical algorithm, okay? So if I am doing 372 and I need to take away 158, I'm gonna set it up vertically first. 372, 158, equal sign, minus sign, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my place value chart. We usually just label that with an H for hundreds, T for tens, and then O for ones, right? All right, and so as soon, and whenever I'm solving and getting to work, I'm like in my head, like, okay, how am I gonna attack this problem? As soon as I see a subtraction sign, what am I saying in my head? Subtraction is fun. Subtraction is fun. Stop. Wait a minute. Check your ones and the menu in. Check your tens and the menu in. Hey, hey, hey. Oh! So, let me zoom in and focus on that menu in. Kids, teach your parents. What does menu in mean? The total you're subtracting from, right? So, zoom in and focus on that menu in. Since I'm zooming in and focusing, I'm going to model that menu in. 100, 200, 300, 70, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2. All right, I'm using disks for mine. 372. And remember all this says, check your what? Ones in the menu and check your ones, show me two. Okay, can you take away eight? What are you gonna have to do? Decompose for 10. 
10 ones, not 10 tens. Decompose for 10 ones. Decompose for 10 ones. Okay, so X out that ones. If I decompose for 10 ones, where am I gonna go to get 10 ones? Where, who, who do I make that exchange with? I decompose a 10, okay? Because why? 110 equals 10 ones. You're just making an exchange there. Now, let's show that with our algorithm, or our model over here. I am going to maybe pick a different number. I don't know, I could do it. All right. Ten. So what I just did there, I decomposed one of my tens for ten ones. Still is the same total value. We just made an exchange so we can subtract eight ones. But we need to label that. I don't have seven tens in my menu and the number I'm subtracting from anymore. What do I have? Six tens. Label it. Don't forget your labels. How many ones do I have? Twelve. Label it. All right, so now let's think about it. Check your ones in the menu in. I got 12. Can I take away eight? Mm hmm Check your tens in the menu in. I got six. Can I take away five? Mm hmm And then my hundreds. I got three. Can I take away one? Absolutely. So subtract away. I'm going to get green. All right, so I have 12. I have 12. I need to take away eight. What is 12 minus eight? Let's see if you can think about it first. Let's see if you're right. 12 take away 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I have 12. I took away 8. How many ones is that? 4. You can clearly see them. Label above. Label below. Don't forget to label your equation. 12 minus 8 is 4. All right, so now I can go to my tens and look at my tens. I have six tens. I need to take away five tens. Six take away five. Six tens take away five tens. What is that? Think about it in your head. Check and see if it's right on your model. One, two, three, four, five. Were you thinking one ten? I was too. Label. Label above. Label below. Don't forget your plus sign. Above we write our units like in unit form. One ten, four ones. Below we write the value like expanded form. How much is that 110 worth? 10. All right, label your equation. Six minus five is? All right, am I done? Better not be. If you said you're done, I'm not going to your bank. Gotta go to the hundreds. Let's see, I have 300, I need to take away 100. Okay, label above, label below. Don't forget your? Plus sign, show that value. So what was 300 minus 100? We label it 200. Now, make sure mathematicians have to be precise. And Miss Moore's mathematicians definitely follow the rules with that. We line up our ones, tens, and hundreds, making sure everything matches. So, so far, my answer is 214. Now, normally, what our process was, we would go ahead and take this answer, put it in our blank, put it in a question, put it everywhere. Yeah. But we're taking it a step further. I want you to check this problem. And how can we check it? Hmm. We talked about this before you left. You can check with addition. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And kids, Prove it to your parents. Remember how we went through that process of proving that it worked? Prove it. Show them the number bond of it. So if I'm sitting here saying that the missing partner was 214, right? So if I draw that with a number bond, let me see. I'm going back to hmm, purple. Yeah, sure. All right. So if we had a number bond set up, so we got a total, we got a partner. We got another partner, right? Whenever we talk about subtracting, what are we solving for? Are we solving for a total? Is this our total? Absolutely not. You better not have said yeah. What is this? When we subtract, we're looking for a missing 
partner. So this is the missing partner we found. Remember, we took it off, there's your missing partner. So I'm gonna put it in one of the partner boxes. 214, doesn't really matter which one you put it in as long as it's one of the partners. I'm even gonna give it a little zigzaggy star. You know why? Because that's the one I found. That's the one we did and subtracted. And that's the one we're checking to see if it's right. All right, so there's 214. What was the other missing partner? What was the other part that we already knew? 158, we already knew that. He gave 158 to his friends. There's that partner. Let's see, 158. What's the total? If you say that's the total, I'm gonna get you. What's the total? 372 is your total. Remember, what is a menu in? The total you're subtracting from. I know I see all my friends doing this, they know. The menuing is the total you're subtracting from. So if this is the total you're subtracting from, this is your total, right? So when we set up this number bond, I like seeing it like this because this is the missing part you found, this is what they gave you, and this is the total. That was the menuing, the total you're subtracting from. Now, in theory, we should be able to put these two partners together and it makes your total, right? If you put two parts together, it should make your total. If it doesn't, you might have done something wrong and you need to go back and check your work. So I like this strategy of check with addition because it gives you another tool in your brain to say, hmm, let me check my work, it's a test or it's an exit ticket, Miss Moore's gonna be looking at these. Stop. Let me check, let me go. And you remember we talked about the cha-cha slide, we always sing it. Reverse, reverse, go in reverse. Check it with addition. Put those partners together, see if it makes your total, your menu in. If it does, you know you are correct. I'll go ahead and try and solve it. If I got some room over here, I miss Mr. B and Mrs. P. Do y'all miss them? For parents that don't know. Mr. B is Mr. Board, he's my white board, and Mrs. P is Mrs. Promethean. They miss us too. All right, so let me see what color will stand out. Which I want, which I want. Pick, 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 pick. Mm. What's Ms. Moore's favorite? I'm gonna do it, I already did enough red. You know what, I'll do this. I'll do green. Okay, so. We are going to check with addition over here. What would be my addition equation to solve this? Remember, math theory, you put two parts together, it's gonna to equal your whole. So, let's line it up. 214, can y'all see it over there? Good. And 158 equals plus sign. Oh, how's the back of my hair looking? I didn't even check the back of my head. All right, so we have our two partners. I got my plus sign ready because I'm gonna put it all together. Now strategy, again, place value chart is a good strategy for us to really organize our ones, tens, and hundreds. So I'm gonna do that strategy, but with addition this time. So I'm gonna set it up. Let me see my, mm, I'm running out of room. We'll do it here. Mm, mm, mm. H. T, need some space. I'm gonna have to do chips on this one. Okay, so my friends, remember, chips is another way you can model this. Remember, modeling is just how you represent a number. And I've been doing this because it helps me to see my hundreds, tens, and ones, but I know a lot of you at home have mastered this and has moved on to showing it as chips chips for our parents out there or just little circles. I am not allowing them to do little dots. I'm old, my eyes can't see them little bitty dots and they get all over the place. Give me some little circles and it'll all be fine. So as soon as I see this problem, what am I thinking in my head, my friends? I know they're singing it. It's a plus sign. What are we seeing whenever we want to attack an addition problem? We're gonna model our parts to find the total. Gonna add till I can't no more, right? So we model all parts. You're not just showing the menu in, the subtraction. We're modeling all parts. Both of our partners are gonna model 
in our place value chart. So what's the first partner? 214. I want to clearly be able to see 214 on the top. So I'm going to do checks. 100, 200, 110, and four ones. All right. So I see, I should be able to clearly say 214. Got it? Our other partner is 158. Mm. Oh, don't forget, give a little while. Space. I'm going to clearly be able to see the first add-in on top and the second add-in below, okay? So, 158, I'm going to do it down here. 100, 5 tens, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 8 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Remember, we can only do 5 in a row, then go below. So, I have one add-in, 214. Second add-in, 158. Now we put it all together. Or, as my friends would say in my class, add till you can't no more. They can jam, y'all. Y'all should see these kids jamming. All right, so let me add till I can't no more with a different color. All right, we're gonna start with the ones place. Remember, we talked about this. You always let the little guy go first. Would you cut in front of a pre-K kid that's waiting in line? Absolutely not. Let the little guy go first. We're going to go to the ones. They're the smallest value there. All right, so what is 4 plus 8? See if you can think of it in your head. Let's see if you're right. 4. Well, I know 4 and 6 more will make a 10. A. What do we do here? If we bundled, we compose a new group of 10. Now... Label it with a big fat 10. So you remember, it makes a new what? 10. Now, if I circle 10 ones and I go to the bank and give him my 10 ones, he better give me my what? My 110. So go ahead and draw the arrow to model that you just exchanged 10 ones for 110. Now, let's show it in our equation. 4 plus 8 equals, how many ones was that? 10, 1. 12. 4 plus 8 is 12. If you said that earlier, you were right. 4 plus 8 is 12. Can I put the whole 12 right here in my ones column? Mm -mm. Let's show what we did in our drawing, in our model. We made a new what? 10. So, in our equation, let's show that we made a new 10. Give me a 1 to represent one new group of 10. And we show our new groups below. That's why I kind of give a little space before I do my equal sign here. And I have one new group of 10, just like I have one new group of 10 below here as well. Okay, so how many ones were left? Two. Lay that in your equation. And Miss Moore's gonna get you. Don't forget to label above and below. So, unit form, it's two ones. The value of two ones is worth two. All right, are we done? Now, move on. Let's go to our tens. All right, so how many tens do I have all together? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't forget your new 10. How many do you have? Seven. Am I gonna be able to bundle and make a new 100? No, you can't just go bundle in anything. I only have seven tens. I don't have ten tens. So seven tens, label it above, label it below. Am I just gonna put a seven there? No, we're gonna put our value below. What is seven tens worth? 70. Go ahead and put that plus sign, 70 plus two. That's what seven tens and two ones equal. All right, ooh, label your equation. What is one plus five? Six. Plus one more 10, seven tens. I'm gonna put that in my tens column. Okay, so far it's matching up. All right, let's look at our hundreds. What's two plus one? You know that. Three, label above, I'm gonna have to label on this side, label below. Am I just gonna put a three there? Absolutely not. We put the value below, 300. Give me a plus sign. All right, so, ooh, equation. What's two plus one? Three. All right. Hey. I see something here. Do you see it? 
What was our total here? 372. What's your total up here? 372. What was your menuing? 372. Told you menuing meant the total you were subtracting from. So if you got your total here, when you put your missing partner with the other partner, you know you are what? Correct. So, fill in your blanks here. We got 300. Braden has 300. Oh wait, no, 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 no. He don't have 372. What does he have left? Look, I'm putting the total. Y'all, y'all better watch me. Oh, he has 214 left. This was just when we checked with addition. Would that make sense if I put Braden has 372 airplanes left? Gotta go back and think of that. Mm -mm. Because he made 372 and then he gave some away. If I would have put that there, that would have been wrong and all that work for nothing. So go back and read. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Give me a little scribble. I missed my board. All right, so what was the answer? 214 left. So let me fix that. 214 airplanes left. Ooh, I could label this question mark. 214, that was that missing partner. I could label, <laughs> ooh, this equation, 214. Give me a box it out. It's kind of going in there, there. All right, so that was just part A. My mathematician, Braden Brown, has a part B for this. I am going to make a picture, put it in the comments, so you guys can solve part B. Tack a picture of your work so I can see it and be so proud of you. Let me see. I thought it up really close. Maybe you could pose on it, something like that. I mean, it's just beautiful work here. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, and also what I'm gonna say is keep those story problems coming, keep those math questions coming. I'm here because I love it. I love math. And what did my shoes say? It's a great day to learn even when you're at home. And I'm still thinking about you guys. And hmm, show me what you know. Oh, also, I'm checking those Zern accounts. Some of you are really making some good progress here. Some of y'all haven't signed in yet. Try it, it's only gonna help you because you need to master these skills before you get to third grade, right? So I'm looking, I'm seeing what you guys are working on. I love seeing these pictures of you guys hard at work and these story problems you're creating. Keep it up and until next time for our next Monday Math Challenge for Miss Moore, my mathematicians. Lots of ma 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 ma. Love you guys, squeeze that hug, squeeze it. Squeeze it. Bye, guys.